Folks, one of the things we try to do here at One Rental at a Time is bring up real life, real experience. Something I have done and talked about over the years is the difference between being a owner, landlord of single family homes versus apartments. Well, good news. We have the CEO of Hemlane who is doing this across hundreds, if not thousands of different properties. So we're going to talk about what she sees in the data, the experience she has from all of hers. And I will ask some questions because I see a clear difference. So Dana, owning and managing a single family home is exactly like managing an apartment building, right? There's There are absolutely no differences. No, there's definitely differences. So we manage over 20,000 rentals and- Damn, 20,000. Yeah, it's almost split 50-50. Um, on, um, of course the apartments, right. It's a, a smaller portion cause it's the, um, twos, fours, tens, twenties. Um, but with it, there's a lot of differences. Um, the first one I actually want to talk about, which is a slightly more difficult emotional one is actually neighborhood drama because you're in closer corridors. So like we can talk about maintenance next maintenance and repairs, but we see a lot of the complaints of noise violations, not getting along with neighbors, neighbors leaving things outside of their doors. Um, you know, they left something in the laundry room, whatever it may they're, be. They're cooking smelly food. Yes, they're, we get that. We get, you know, they're smoking weed, all of this kind of stuff that just goes into having um uh, living together in close corridors. Now, some of that you might say is a pro, like, great, I'd like to know if the neighbor has a dog and they're not supposed to have a dog. But there's a lot of things such as the noise complaints and the noise violations that are very difficult oh, because yeah. you have to look at, you know, county and city ordinances. What is the decibels that they have? What is fair? And then just trying to respect neighbors, there's a lot of differences in opinions of what that is. Oh, it, it, once a relationship goes, again, we try to share the real world. My my first five years in the business was all homes. Then I start 1031ing. I remember selling or 1031ing out of Norris Drive into Vassar. And I think in the first six weeks, I had more complaints at Vassar, which was five units, than I'd had in Norris Drive for five years. Five years, yeah. yeah. Park parking, uh, yeah, smoking weed, loud music. Um, it's and you're right, it's drama. But you as the owner, or in my experience, the property manager, it's stuff you got to deal with. And then the yeah. other thing is once once neighbor A reports on neighbor B, you can guarantee neighbor B is gonna report on A and it's just gonna be tit for tat. It's it's drama is the right word. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And the difference with a single family home is let's just say you have a single family home with two tenants in it who are roommates. You still make them jointly responsible for the lease and their actions. So if they have drama, they have to deal with it. Um, but in the case of a, an apartment complex, you are responsible to deal with that and um, play that mediation role. And so, yeah, I find that to be the biggest one that we see is just neighborhood um, uh, complaints and conduct there. Um, then the second thing is maintenance and repairs. Of course, if it's single family, um, you can say, great, the yard is not communal, so you're responsible for landscaping. Um, and then we found that there's just slightly more ownership. We know that tenants live in single family homes for longer. The turnover time Definitely. is less frequent. And um, they take some more ownership because of that, because they know that they're there for longer term. And in an apartment complex, it, it's not that it's a hotel, but it almost has that mentality of shorter term um, for a lot of tenants. And so you do see a lot more requests come in of like my faucet stripping. And in other cases, tenants may just figure that out and tighten up um, some screw or something like that. And so we definitely do see a lot more um, repairs um, or just, you know, entering different types of requests for an apartment complex. And then it gets a little bit more difficult when you do repairs because uh, plumbing is actually the number one category we see. So if you look like handiwork, electrical, plumbing, appliance repair, for sure. hand -down plumbing is number one. And it's also the one that it causes um, so much damage. It can cause so much damage. Oh, to yeah. 
You want to get a small plumbing problem. You don't want to let that slide. Yeah, because then you have mold, water, you know, all of that. And so a lot of times there will be things like, hey, I'm there's a leak. And if it's a single family home and there's a leak downstairs, your first question is like, great. Do you have a bathroom upstairs? You know, does it just need more caulking? And that's the the problem or, you know, trying to troubleshoot and you troubleshoot with the person there. Suddenly, when it's an apartment complex, it's the person upstairs, you have to get their availability, the person downstairs, all of that. And so on the repair side, yeah, there is a bit more involved in it. And that's why actually, if we do the repair coordination on a multifamily, we require all the units to be in our repair coordination, because it's too hard and we don't have the authorization to get upstairs, if not. Yeah, there's just so many more things that go on. And again, right, so not neighborhood drama apartment drama, repair requests, uh, coordinate. It's just all a much heavier lift. Uh, and But most importantly, the other thing you said there that I want to echo is average tenure, right? It, it's not even close. I, the last time I did the math, it's been a while. Single family homes were almost eight years in my portfolio where apartments are, I think, barely over two years. Two years, yeah. yeah and so that's huge because if you think about your cash flow, let's just say the average rental in the US, I think, is around uh, 1650 and that's apartment and um, single family. So if you think about it, if it's two year, if we just do the math quickly and you have one month of vacancy there, what you have to think about is it's 1650. The turnover is four times more if it's two years versus eight years. So now if you're, I'm going to do some quick math here, the 1650 times um, four. So you have 6,600 in cash flow. And then if you times that times um, two, because you have leasing fees and some turnover sure. fee, then sure. you're at 13,200 additional in cash flow just from vacancy alone yeah. and reducing that. And so I, the numbers are real. Yeah, the numbers are real. Yeah, what I would tell folks, there's the, there, there, it's really funny. Um, there's this nomenclature that bigger is better. And- what I've again, because I own some of this stuff, right? Bigger is better sometimes. I think over the last couple of years, and right before I, we speak together every week, I talked to Jonathan Twomley, and the three conversations we had today was uh, there's a trillion dollar overhang in bad debt in commercial real estate. Ivy Zellman's telling us that there's an overhang of uh, units. And why was there a lot of pain? There's a lot of pain coming to multifamily because people had horrible assumptions, short term debt, variable rate debt. Frankly, they're repeating the mistakes. So bigger is better sometimes. I don't think apartments have been better for the last couple of years. Once this pain ripples through, there are going to be some amazing deals, and I'll buy it again. But it doesn't matter what Grant Cardone says. Bigger is not always better. And for most landlords watching my channel, there's nothing wrong with single families. There's nothing wrong with single families. So what do you think? Yeah. No, I totally, I couldn't agree more, especially from what we're seeing. Um, I think single family is just a fantastic investment. And also, if you look at just trends overall with um, where tenants are living and not needing to be in the city for work, you know, um, five, um, five days of the week, needing more space, because now you think of a home office as your office, there's just a lot of also just trends from that perspective, self-driving cars, where you can get more easily to different places. You don't need to be right downtown, um, in an apartment complex, right where all the restaurants are. Um, and, and that will even change over time much more, especially as self-driving cars become more prominent. At the end of the day, if if you were if I was looking at buying a ten unit building versus five single family homes, just to kind of keep the numbers roughly equal, uh, in today's market, I'd be looking for five single family homes. Maybe in two years, when pain ripples through, people get busted out. The ten unit will be a better deal, but bigger has not been better for two years. The headache factor is up. The returns are worse. It's just. It's a sexy slogan that's just not true today. Dana, if somebody wanted to get a hold of Hemlane and do the 30-day trial, which all of you should, you should practice being a landlord, where should they get it? Yeah, you can go to www.hemlane.com and you get um, 30 days free and just mention one rental at a time for 20% off your first year. Very cool. Thank you so much, Dana. Thanks for having me.